Uh, yes, our coverage for the 2016 general election continues today. Douglas South and Kate Beecroft, leader of the Lib Van Party, 63, married with a family, admired Margaret Thatcher, described her as a gritty lady. That's a direct quote from you. Good morning, I'm Mrs Beecroft. I'm not quite sure you're correct in saying I admired her. It, it um, did say, you were asked if you admired Mrs Thatcher and her, you did say she was a gritty lady. not necessarily her politics. Took over in March, that. two yeah. years ago, from Peter yeah. Caron. Uh, all your aspirations hang on winning next month, or does it? If you were not chosen on September the 22nd, would you still be leader of the Lib Vans? Um, if we have an MHK, then the MHK has to be leader. So if somebody like Laurie Hooper or Pat Ayres got in and I didn't, then one of them would become leader. Well, your party won 20% of the vote in 2011, nearly 21%. Yes, we did. Ten candidates producing three MHKs, of which one, Zach Hall, a uh, party company, Mm -hmm. fairly soon afterwards. What is your party's target this time? I notice you just have three candidates standing we have at the three moment. We have three declared at the moment, yes. More, more to come? Possibly. Just watch this space. So John. what is your aim? Well, our aim is to have candidates who obviously get elected and have stood for the right reasons and will not leave us so but that the majority they stay of candidates, with us. Candidates who will give you a majority in, in Tinwell? We won't have that. Being realistic, we, we're not going to have that this time. Being realistic, what's the target you're setting yourself? Um, realistic, three or four. Do you think you could be chief minister? It's a possibility, and that actually goes with my job as leader to try to be that, to get into that position. And that's what every leader of every party tries to do, so that their policies are implemented. You say every party, of course, we've not got that many parties. Um, you would have to obviously garner support from Tinwall. Yes, I would. Have you started that process? Uh, not officially, no. Unofficially? Um, unofficially. I think everybody's been talking about who is going to be the next chief minister of sort of for months to be honest whether it was going to be Alan Bell because at that time he hadn't said he wasn't standing again um, or whether it was going to be some others but some of the independent candidates um, if they get in if they're successful I do know that I have their support for the policies whether I have their support for chief minister we'll have to wait until after the election we've got to all got to get elected first John. You have a robust relationship with your Lib Van members you had a public row with Cat Turner a councillor of the term tax haven didn't you? It wasn't a public row with her. It was, a, it was in the headlines. <laughs> Sorry, that does not mean that they were Fairly right. public. Uh, we had a disagreement about terminology. Uh, we didn't. We certainly didn't speak together in public about it. I disagreed with what she believed. But the fact it was reported we and came out in the public makes it a public row. Does it not? A publicly reported disagreement. OK, we'll yes. agree to differ on that. We will. Um, achievements as an MHK as a party. You cite the National Insurance Holiday as one. What yeah. else? Um, well, we've obviously exposed the Sefton as being an unlawful loan at that time. Um, I think you can see quite a lot of things. We we had a change in the health service, if you recall, the chief executive and the top level management. Um, that was initiated by Liberal. Do you Vanek. think that's enough, though, as a, as a the probably the opposition party? Well, I prefer to think of us as a scrutiny. Uh, rather than just the opposition, because if we're opposition, we're doing a pretty rubbish job, given that we vote 90% of the time with government. That, that is what I say. You but have regularly support the government when they're doing the right thing, which is about 90% of the time. That's, that's right. not what strikes the public. They no, seem it isn't. To think and that's because what gets reported to the public is the times when we disagree, uh, which is obviously the times that you're going to report. You're not going to report and say, oh, look, everybody agreed today. That doesn't make good headlines, John, does it? <laughs> You want to make politics compulsory in schools for 14-year-olds and 14, above? Yeah, 14 to 16-year-olds. Wouldn't olds, that yeah. bore the pants off them? Well, I would hope not, because we're giving them the vote when they're 16. And I would like to think that they had the fundamentals of how our system works before they actually exercise that vote and that it would engage with them to show them why it's important that they use their vote this and is very use worthy. it carefully. This is the sort of thing 14-year-olds are into. Well, if they were explained how it works and what difference it can make, they certainly got interested when it was the student tuition fees, didn't they? When well, it's something that affects people, they get engaged. And if you can engage the youth from 14 to 16, hopefully you will keep them engaged for the rest of their lives. We'll have to clear, close it there, Kate Beecroft. Gosh, Thanks. that went quick. It Thank does. You, Thank you very much. <laughs> Kate Beecroft on the programme this morning.